Hey everybody, hey traders, Chris Bulver here. Welcome back to another installment of my Keep It Seriously Simple video series where I take my best practices, my best trading strategies and teach traders in any financial market to be more consistently profitable. Now, this video is all about choosing the right broker. Now, this is an extremely important video because brokers are in the game to make money. Right now, we have to play by the rules and when we sign the dotted line and own up to all the risk disclosures, we are taking on really all of the inherent risk. Now we understand that, we acknowledge it, which is why equity management and our process is what helps us take care of the profits. Now, this video is gonna be sponsored by my friends at Forest Park FX. I've been working with them for over eight years and they have saved me thousands of dollars and I know that they're helping thousands of traders around the world. So this is Forest Park FX and I have a word from them in just one minute. So Forest Park FX. Dot com. What do they help me with? Well, I have rebates that come from all of my brokers. That means that when I place a trade and I have to pay the spread and I have finance and the commission charges, a portion of that comes back to me, the trader. If I didn't have Forest Park FX, that rebate just goes right to the broker's pocket. Now, on average, I've for the last probably eight, nine years that I've looked at my bottom lines, I've seen that anywhere between 15 and 20% of my profits go back to my broker. Now, that's just the cost of doing business. That's paying the spread, that's financing charges, that's commission, those are going back to the broker. So to get a chunk back and reduce that and say that maybe the net is that the broker ends up making maybe 10 to 15%, that's a big difference. It all adds up, right? So that is a really, really beneficial program that I've been in now for years. Um, and it's as easy as getting a check every month. It's as easy as a direct deposit. It goes right back to you uh, from Forest Park FX. Another thing that I love is better spreads. Okay, better spreads, reduce commissions, and brokers that are well-regulated, brokers that are highly liquid, brokers that aren't gonna just disappear overnight. So you should definitely be trading with a regarded, regulated broker, okay? So better spreads, better commissions, and one thing I also use and take full advantage of is a VPS service. So certain brokers will sponsor a VPS or a virtual private server allowing you to trade automated strategies and do so without having to pay the extra 50 or 100 bucks a month to manage that VPS service. So certain brokers do it. I have one that uh, I, I run basically four to five accounts on it, so I can have you know several instances of my MetaTrader for running for my automated strategies with no disruption. Any of the maintenance that happens with those servers is typically done on the weekends where we're not able to trade, so it's perfect. So this little structure right here has helped me save a ton of dollars and do what I do best, and that is trade. And that's all I wanna do. I don't want to fight the brokers for this stuff. So have an ally do it for you. That's what Forest Park FX is for. So on that note, I'll play this little short video from Forest Park FX and see what they have to say. Forex trading can be expensive when you factor in the spreads, commissions, and swap fees that brokers charge. With the Forest Park FX Cashback Rebate Program, you can save upwards of 20% or more on your Forex trading costs. When you think about how many trades you place, that's a lot of money that should be in your pocket, not your brokers. Open a new FX account through Forest Park FX and begin saving now. Forest Park FX, higher quality service, lower cost of trading. Terms and conditions apply. Forex trading involves significant risk of loss. Okay, welcome back, so let's dive right into it. So what I'm gonna do is just walk through my structure with all the instruments that I trade and the brokers that I'm using. So I trade stocks actively, I trade Forex actively, I trade options actively, and I trade cryptos. Now, uh, I have a 401k, I have retirement accounts, I have life insurance. These are different investment vehicles that I'm using. Um, these are my actively traded financial instruments. So for stocks, I'm using uh, Robinhood and I'm using TD Ameritrade. Um, I am also, I'm trying to think, anyone else, Robinhood. I was gonna sign up for Webull, but I like Robinhood, it's easy. That's my kind of active mobile one. Um, I trade options with Robinhood as well, FX. I work with several FX brokers. I work with Oanda. I work with uh, FXCM. FXCM. I work with Global Prime. I work with Devisa. I work with Pepperstone. 
Um, I have worked over the years with Global Forex Trading, Forex.com, Alpari, uh, lots of brokers. Now, uh, in the U.S., I know that IG Markets is another massive broker. They were huge. They are huge in the in the, uh, the U.K. They're huge in Europe. Uh, they're also making a pretty good chunk or doing a pretty good chunk of business in the U.S. with IG U.S. So IG Markets is another one. Uh, options, I trade uh, Robinhood, and I also do Tasty Trade with options. And cryptos, I keep it really simple. I just have a Coinbase wallet. Um, I did trade with Bitfinex for a little bit and GDAX, um, but really my digital wallet is Coinbase. And I'm, I'm not super active in cryptos. What I've essentially done is said, look, here's what I'm willing to invest as a finite example of buying low and hold out for the Millennium Lottery on cryptos to go up to, you know, $100,000 or whatever on Bitcoin or a million dollars, who knows. So Coinbase is where I have the digital wallet. Uh, let's focus on these here. If you want more information on Forex specifically, like I said, contact my friends at Forest Park FX, work with them. Uh, it's really easy to, if you have live accounts right now with one simple link, uh, they can get you put underneath uh, them as the introducing broker and you can right away sign up for those rebates and spreads and commissions and VPS services, things like that. Like I said before, brokers are in this to make money. Now it is our job to play by the rules. Now the best way that we can play by the rules and come out ahead and actually make profit is to always practice good equity management. So the most important thing here with any of these brokers is that your money is diversified. I would never take all of my capital and put it in one particular broker. I would spread it around. So that's why I work with several Forex brokers. That's why I have stock accounts in different brokers. Uh, same thing with options. Cryptos, you know, Coinbase is my wallet, but that to me, this is actually my smallest account of all of them. Uh, and I'm totally fine with that. But it's important that you find a broker that works for you. Now, I would say that most brokers are, are going to be, you know, comparable in, in some way as far as, you know, how you actually trade, how you execute. If you're looking at, uh, you know, I, I'm Deep, deeply invested in Forex. And so as an example, you know, working with Forest Park FX, if you just take all these different brokers and compare what they do well and what they do not so well as far as you as the trader, um, I would say that, you know, the spreads are going to be different. So spreads and commissions will vary. Spreads and commissions will vary. Uh, the margin requirements will also vary. This also depends on where you live, but margin requirements are a big differentiator between certain brokers. Um, let's see here if there are, you know, costs associated with those commissions and financing charges. So the, you know, rollovers, uh, rollover and fees. So let's talk about some key questions that you should be asking yourself and asking these brokers in order for you to do business with them. I would say the first thing for me is, is my money safe? If you are dealing with a broker in any financial instrument that seems a little shady, that seems like they're offering something that seems a little bit too good to be true, they're giving me a bonus, they're giving me an incentive, they're giving me extra money to put in my account if I do this, there's usually a string attached to things that sound too good to be true. So is my money safe? Number one, every broker you work with should be regulated. If you're working in the Forex industry especially, I would say you wanna have the US, the UK, and Australia those are the top regulated regulatory bodies in the Forex world. If it's not a broker that's regulated in one of those three areas, I would not use them. Now, why is that? Because those are the type of brokers that offer you a thousand to one leverage, which sounds amazing. Look at this, I can take this tiny little account and just over leverage the snot out of it in order to make some dollars. That broker also says, hey, you trade X amount of dollars, you trade X amount of standard lots and we'll throw in an extra thousand dollars you're probably gonna lose that money because they're encouraging you to over leverage. They're encouraging you to trade, you know, really capital that you have no business trading. So and if, if it's, look, if it's a regulated broker that has that type of leverage, fantastic, but most of them do not. So don't fall for the bonuses, right? We'll give you extra dollars. We'll put in an extra $500 in your account. We'll put an extra thousand dollars. Usually the strings attached are, you have to trade X amount of volume. You have to put in let's say a, a million, a million dollars in volume for the month, there's a string attached to that. That means if you want to trade small, you might not be able to do that. Uh, it would require X amount of trades per day. It's just stupid stuff. You should be in control of when you trade, what you trade and how you trade. So work with a broker that allows you to do that. All right. So like I said, if you have any questions on this stuff, contact Forest Park FX, especially when it comes to Forex trading. Now, when it comes to stocks, same thing, regulated, is your money safe? That's the first question I'm gonna ask for anything. Is my money safe? 
You know, Robinhood was an interesting switch. Now, Robinhood is also um, in business with tons of different hedge funds and large investment banks. And so is the money safe? Yeah. Am I, am I putting in, you know, a million dollars in Robinhood? No, it's diversified. I have, you know, Charles Schwab. I have a uh, John Hancock. I have Northwestern Mutual. I have TD Ameritrade, Robinhood. I mean, I, these are my kind of retail accounts that I trade. And then I have other investment vehicles that are working kind of more passively. Once you've done your homework and a bit of due diligence and determined that your money is safe, now it's time to focus on the task at hand, which is trading. Now for me, I tend to also look at my broker for their platform and their technology. Okay, so is it easy to use? Is it visually friendly? Is it intuitive? I don't want much of a learning curve when it comes to me placing trades. Uh, for example, I know that uh, you know there's a ton of traders that love and respect interactive brokers, Ninja Trader, um, any type of broker platform that allows you to trade multiple instruments. That's that's amazing, um, but I don't really want much of a learning curve. I don't want to have to spend you know two, three, four weeks navigating all the tools, figuring out how to use it just to place a trade. I know what I want to do. That's I want to buy low, I want to sell high, I want to make profit. Now to do that, it shouldn't be a learning curve for me to accomplish that. Uh, the next question I'm asking, and this, this is probably the most important one, and if you have any other questions on any of this stuff, please, if you're a Forex trader, contact my friends at Forest Park FX. They also can help you uh, set up with certain tax services as well, or get you into the right references and resources to better structure yourself as a trader. Uh, the most important thing for me, and I'm, I'm not even going to write this down, I'm just going to, I'm just going to write it in all capital letters, okay? <laughs> Broker, this is my main question for you. Okay, does the broker help you or hurt you when it comes to your trading process? What I mean, what I mean by that is, do they make it more difficult to be a trader or are they fine with it? The way I look at it is this, okay? Over the years, I have found the way to make some profits. I'm a pretty consistently profitable trader, okay? So if I'm making profit for myself, I know that if I'm generating trades and I'm churning volume and I trade a fair amount of capital, I know that my broker is also benefiting from that. Is the broker to my relationship okay with that? Is that a win-win? Because if I'm making money, I'm happy. If my broker's making money because of the spreads and commissions and the cost of new business, if they're okay with that, then it's a good relationship. When I discover that the broker is trying to hurt my process. I will jump from that broker. Case in point, um, if you've ever dealt with a broker that has brought up compliance, if you've ever dealt with a broker that has said, you need to liquidate these positions, you need to stop doing this, you need to stop doing this, if they're giving you ultimatums and, and threatening to have you close positions or liquidate your positions, Unless you're doing something incorrectly like over margining, right? And you're over leveraging, that's obviously within the rules. But I'm talking about, okay, the, they're, they're gonna migrate servers and you have to close all your positions. Well, if they gave you a heads up four weeks ago, that's fine. But when I'm talking about like 24 hours, 48 hours, and there's nothing you can do about it. If a broker is, and it's not just a one-time thing, like this is happening maybe on the regular. This is happening where I've had, you know, a broker send me a nice compliant email saying, we recognize that your activity is not to our liking. So in doing so, we're going to give you a warning or threaten to liquidate some of your open positions because this keeps happening. Um, if you've ever had any FIFO errors for US trading, is the broker threatening to close your account or freeze your account? If they're making it more difficult for you to trade, find another broker. And that's why I said work with someone that can help you find the best broker for you. I know how I trade, all right? I'm not a high frequency trader. I don't turn tons of volume, but I do know that I'm trading a fair amount of capital. I make pretty good money and I know that the broker benefits from that. And if they just don't bother me, I will stay with that broker and never ask any questions. I have a process. This is what I do for a living. The broker should be happy with that. Now they're still going to get 15 to 20% from me just by doing business on average. Now I'm taking a chunk of that away, but that's part of the relationship that they have with Forest Park FX. But this is an important deal. You know, this is the trade-off. If they're trying to make my life harder, I'm going to find another broker. And that's why in Forex, I've had like eight different brokers. Okay. I've been now with, I'm with Oanda uh, and Pepperstone and uh, Global Prime. I'm, I'm with brokers that for the last several years, they don't bother me. I just trade, 
they do their business, I do my business, and we coexist, right? I don't like brokers, but it's a necessary evil. But if they don't disrupt my process, I'm fine with that. So questions, is your money safe? Make sure that you're using a regulated broker. Make sure that your money, whether it's up to a certain amount, if you have to have multiple accounts and spread it out through multiple brokers, that's fine. But is your money safe? Is your broker gonna close up shop? They should not be doing that. Obviously, if it's a US, UK, or Australia regulated broker, that's the highest label regulatory body. So that's gonna be the, the, the top tier right there. Leverage and bonuses and, and just kind of the, the, the smoke and mirrors, like, does it sound good too good to be true, like I said? You know, are they offering you incentives? Are they saying, hey, we'll do this for you. We'll give you this free money if you do this. Like, it's usually not a good thing, right? If they're asking you to take certain trades or asking you to trade certain trade sizes, if they put minimums on what you can do and expect you to, you know, perform a certain way, I don't like that. Platform and technology, it should be easy, intuitive. Most importantly, this is the big one. Does the broker make your life harder or easier? Can you just coexist, you do what you do in trade, and the broker enjoys that relationship and they know that you're not going anywhere, right? I mean, if I can trade until I'm 90 plus years old, I will do that. And if I do it with the same broker because they never bother me, I'm totally fine with that relationship, okay? So I'll leave you with this. This is a really important video. It's obviously very informative, kind of a big public service announcement, but finding the right broker is critical to you doing business as a trader. It helps your bottom line a ton. And my friends at Forest Park FX have helped me save tens of thousands of dollars just in the last five or six years. Um, they are instrumental to what I do. I would highly recommend that even if you are a, a, a beginning Forex trader or you've been in the Forex business for a long time or been trading for a while, contact them and work with them. If you have live accounts right now and you're not working with Forest Park FX, get with them. It doesn't disrupt any of your trading and you're going to see rebates. You're going to see broker sponsored VPSs, better commissions and spread and improve your bottom line because that's what it boils down to. We trade to make profit. If that broker allows us to do so and doesn't make it harder for us, that's going to be a broker that I would like to stick with. Okay. So that's it for today's video. I will see you in the next Keep It Seriously Simple video series. Take care.